So can you cook two tri-tips on a Weber? Sure. And to make it even more interesting, we're going to do a little cook-off. That was a good intro, right, baby? We're going to do a little cook-off. Yeah, right. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Todd. The Sassy Kitchen Queen's over there doing uh, wifey stuff, rooting me on, rooting the channel on, just like you guys. If you're rooting the channel on, folks, hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And folks, hit us up down in the description. I mean, the comments. Tell us what you think. All right, so today, today, I should really say tonight because it's Friday night. I'm feeling all right. We going to party. We have two tri-tip steaks here, folks. For you folks on the East Coast and don't know what tri-tip is, um, yeah, you're going to have to Google it. But let me just tell you, it's one of the delicious, most delicious pieces of meat uh, that you've never had. If you've had it, you know, I'll let you be the judge. But uh, you might have to go ask your butcher, you know, hey, give me a piece of tri-tip and order some something special or something online. And uh, that's okay. Here out on the West Coast, we typically do this Santa Maria style over open flame. And a Weber, yeah, that's pretty close. But on the Weber, what I want to do is offset it a little bit, get some pecan and some charcoal, and bring it up really sl slowly. Kind of sneak up on it a little bit with some pecan smoke. And then when it gets to about 115 or 120 or so, then slide it over, stoke up that fire a little bit, and sear it over some open coals. It should come out really good. Tri-tip is a really forgiving piece of meat. It's juicy. It could take that direct heat, no problem at all, guys. But to make this a little bit more interesting, I'm going to break out one of my old favorites, new favorites, current favorites, Uncle Steve's Shake Competition Cow Powder. Okay. Now, this stuff is obviously world-renowned, known well for making great bark on your brisket, pulled pork, whatever you want it for. And something that we also like, although we're not plugging this brand particularly, but Cosmo's Cow Cover, we like the color. Sassy loves the flavor. And early on, it was one of our favorites. Obviously, this one's our favorite now. But I'm going to try to cook them both the same as much as I can. Both tri-tips are two pounds each. They are choice, but that's okay. Tri-tip doesn't need to be primed to be good. So let's get started. Sassy's favorite, second favorite cut of beef. Her first favorite cut of beef is me. We have a left and a right. Okay. Honestly, there, I don't know how to tell if there's a left and right, but maybe I'm looking at a right and left. I don't know. Let's do that. Okay. So I don't think it matters, but uh, hey, if there is a right and left, I'm probably looking at it. Okay. So um, I guess I'll go ladies first. Uh, so I'm going to hit with some of those Cosmos here. Now this is cow cover. And uh, I'm going to put it on thick. Uh, that's what Cosmos says do. Um, I'm just going to cover it up. We love this color. And uh, I'm going to hit the sides. And then the other side. Now, usually I like to hit it with some avocado oil uh, first, kind of as a schmear or binder. But uh, I'm not going to do it this time. I'm just going to let it cook slow. And I don't want that, uh, that oil uh, causing this uh, seasonings to run off. Okay. Now, first impression. I like the color, you know, but, uh, you know, some of them little import cars are colorful too, but that doesn't mean they're good. Okay. So, all right, let's try the Uncle Steve's shake. Okay. Again, this is competition cow powder. It's really great on brisket. I've tried it and I'm going to go on. Now I've shaken this up a little bit and uh, I'm going to go on plenty strong, plenty heavy. Now, the color isn't as poppin' as that cow powder. But I'm not going to be using the color as a judgment on these because... It's all about the flavor, baby. It's all about the flavor, baby, she says. So, um, the way we do tri-tip is, you know, I'm, gonna not, I'm not going to do a reverse here. I'm going to sear it toward the end. But I'm putting it over direct coals. Okay, that's probably going to char it up. It's going to burn any seasoning that's left on it. So really the, the color is kind of irrelevant at this point, by the way, I'm going to cook it. I'm hoping that these flavors here will slow cook 
on that Weber offset and add to that flavor and get really inside that meat. That's what I'm hoping for. Okay. Now, like any uh, good rub, especially Uncle Steve's, if while you're cooking, you know, you get a little bald spot, don't forget, just you can always go back and cover that up a little bit. Hence, cow powder cover, okay? That's why they call this stuff cover, okay? Yeah, I just made that up. All right, guys, so let's go out to the Weber and light her up. As you can see here, we have this slow and sear. Um, it's a stainless steel uh, offset charcoal basket from uh, SNS Grills. I got uh, some good old ridge uh, lump charcoal in here, and I got some pieces of pecan uh, about that size, maybe a little bit bigger. And I'm emphasizing more smoke at the front end. So I'm going to be lighting this little piece of paraffin starter cube. And that is a Weber product. I'm going to let it burn for a second and just dump in some charcoal right on top of that. I'm just using one piece. There we go. Okay, and then I'm just going to kind of kind of space out that smoke here. I'm not trying to make a bridge so that it ends up lighting too much of this. There we go. As you guys notice, a uh, little piece of foil here to kind of protect the uh, bottom of the Weber and um, not necessarily to catch any drippings, just to kind of protect it also to kind of force that air to come up through the bottom and come through this basket. Notice that this particular grate has these little trap doors on either side. So once I get ready to go some, some, to some direct grilling, you know, I could open this up and stir them around, kind of even it out. Okay, obviously you guys have seen my fireboard. This is a discontinued model. I almost paid $200 for this. I think I got it on sale for 180 bucks. You know, they have an upgraded model. I'm not here to plug fireboard, but you've seen my past videos where I have telemetry from these cooks. This thing's awesome. There's other brands out there. Obviously, this thing is heavy. It's rechargeable. You can hook up to a computer. It interfaces with your home's Wi-Fi and then with your app. You could take off and go to Walmart or barbecue store or wherever and still monitor your cook. All right, guys, now all we've got to wait for is for that little corner to come alive and get some nice uh, flame and fire going. Close that lid, try and get a stable temperature of right around 275 to 300, and then I'm going to put them tri-tips on there. So now all i got to do is have another beer. Okay hey guys, let's uh, check out under the lid of the Weber. It's like, hey guys, if you're looking, you ain't peeking. If you're cooking, no, if you're, if you're peeking, you ain't cooking. If you're looking, you ain't cooking, okay? I got the Fireboard app. I know exactly what's going on under the lid of that Weber. I'm not gonna screw up a good cook by peeking all the time, especially on a Weber. It's no bueno, not gonna happen. So let me show you. Okay, as you guys can see, the uh, ambient temperature is kind of steadily going up, so I'm going to choke it off a little bit, make sure it doesn't get over 300. You can see the two tri-tips are nicely kind of climbing up. Let me get rid of that. There we go. And, um, you know, the uh, Steve's tri-tip is beating the Cosmos basically because it's closer to the fire. They're both going to reach uh, essentially my target right around 120 to 125, uh, and then I'm going to sear them. Yeah, there we go. Give you a little better shot of that uh, fireboard. And the uh, temperature up at the lid is definitely reading higher than the grate level. But I know what the grate level is doing because I got a probe there. But uh, I definitely don't want it to spike up too much, so I'm going to close it down just a little bit. All right, guys, let's see uh, how they're doing. Okay, 
So we got here Uncle Steve's Shake, and this is the one with the Cosmos. On the surface, it looks like, you know, some of the Cosmos kind of melted away, kind of didn't stick, and it almost looks more moist. I'm going to venture and say that although this might look a little dry here, it's actually holding in some of that, uh, some of that juice. So now internal temperature on both is right about what I'm targeting in order to uh, sear these. So what I'm going to do is gently take them out. I'm going to let them coast up a little bit. Okay. Now there might be some mixing of flavors there, but that's okay. So now these are going to keep coasting a little bit. Now I'm, I'm going to let those kind of sit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stoke this fire here and try to get it all the way across here. So I'll be right back. Of note, I'm using the competition cow powder on this uh, tri-tip here. And uh, this one here, got this uh, orange stuff here, cow powder. So this one didn't stick as well. Again, I didn't use any binder. Uh, just kind of ran off a little bit. Uh, the Uncle Steve shake, even after that searing, did a pretty good job holding up to that sear. There we go. There we go. Juicy, pink, perfect medium right there. Okay. Now, I'm gonna do the Uncle Steve's shake. Okay. All right, nice and juicy, nice medium. Okay, here we go. It is juicy, look at that. It's the way tri-tips are supposed to be. All right, let's go ahead and taste this up here. We'll go with this piece first, and then the Uncle Steve's. Again, Cosmos. Hmm, not bad. Not a lot of salt taste there. Got a little bit of other stuff. I'm not sure what it is. You know, honestly, I haven't really looked at the ingredients much. But um, now let's try the uh, Uncle Steve's. Mmm. Wow. Mmm. Right off the bat, it's got more salt and pepper taste. It brings out that beefy flavor. It's what I'm looking for when I'm cooking a tri-tip. I don't want too much uh, fluffy stuff covering up that beautiful flavor. And it tastes great. Here, come here, baby. Try, try a piece, baby. Okay. I'm just gonna feed it to you and not tell you which it is. Okay, that's one. You get a chance to eat it. What do you think? Tastes good? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. And here's the other one. First impression? First impression, it's delicious. It tastes like the same piece. Oh. Ah. <laughs> okay, so she thinks they taste the same. Um, I think she's been uh, drinking something, so. Um, all right. The second one was Uncle Steve's. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. They're both delicious. I mm. love cow cover too. All right, guys. There you have it. Uncle Steve's shake wins once again. All right, folks. Hey, thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it. If you uh, like this video, please subscribe, hit the thumbs up, and uh, comment down below. What's this? My homie embrace. Homemade rice roni, all right. Let's see if I can eat tongs. All right, we'll go.
Alright guys, see you on the next one.